Are you looking to access the Home Depot product catalog and get the raw data behind it so you can put that data into your own project like this? Well, congratulations, because you found the right video, and I'm going to show you how you can access raw structured data from Home Depot in JSON format. So the first thing we want to do is see if Home Depot offers an official API that we could work with and get product data from. So a quick Google search though doesn't show very promising results. So it looks like there's some chatter here on a public API and I'm directed to this link here. Uh, but it's protected so I'm guessing they have some sort of API but it's not open to the public. The next thing we can do is look for open source software. Maybe someone else has an API written that knows how to interact with Home Depot servers unofficially. But if we Google around, we won't find that. We'll see uh, if we add the word GitHub to our search, we'll find that there's an official Home Depot GitHub, but there's not actually a client library that accesses Home Depot. If there is, write something in the comments below and I'll update my material. Since no one else has documented a way to get the structured data from Home Depot, let's head on over to the website and do it ourselves. We want to see if we can find some unofficial endpoints that send and receive JSON data to and from Home Depot while browsing their site through a technique called network traffic interception. So we're gonna go and find some products in their catalog and then scroll through them and see if we can take a look at the network traffic that Home Depot sends back to us that should have structured data on what their product catalog looks like. So here's some smart home products in the Home Depot gift center. I wanna see if I can look at the network traffic Home Depot uses to populate these on the page so I can check out the structured data behind it. So to do this, I usually look for a pagination call which is usually at the bottom. Here we go, and before I click this pagination button, I want to inspect the network traffic. So right click somewhere on the page, assuming you're in Google Chrome, hit inspect, and then click on the network tab so we can take a look at the network traffic that Home Depot is sending and receiving. So you'll see sometimes it does it for like tracking, events, if I scroll around, it'll keep track of where I'm scrolling. Uh, but for this case, let's click on the XHR tab because I want to look at kind of Ajax requests that it sends and receives. And let me just clear this and hit the next button. So now it's making some Ajax calls as you can see and some data is getting sent back and forth and we should get the next page of the products right here. So where did this data come from? So what I like to do is if it's coming from JSON we can search for this string here. Let's just search for polished steel and then do Apple F and search for it in your network traffic and you'll see it's coming from this endpoint called Ajax navigation. We'll see the URL is here ending with Ajax navigation and let's look at the data it sends back. Oh boy, it's HTML. So it turns out Home Depot is actually rendering this data server side and sending it back to us in HTML. So they're not exposing the structured JSON data. So how do we get the raw data? Well, we have two options. We could try using a screen scraper, which uh, there are tons of them on the market. And what they do is they go through the HTML and they try to guess what each thing corresponds to. The big problem though is when Home Depot updates their website, it breaks all the screen scrapers. So I try to avoid that and only use it as a last resort. There is one other thing we could do and it involves using our mobile device. If a company's website isn't powered by API Ajax requests, oftentimes a mobile app will be. So we can take a look at a mobile app and do exactly what we did on the website and perform network traffic interception. Doing this though is a little bit trickier and this is really kind of a last resort. Uh, you're going to need to actually look at SSL traffic which is difficult because the mobile app and Home Depot communicate over SSL. But what you can do is use a man in the middle proxy like the one I have linked to here called MITM proxy and you can connect to that proxy and tell your phone to trust that proxy certificate. And then once your phone trusts the proxy, the proxy can then decrypt the encrypted data it's sending back and forth, read it and send it back to you so we can see what the requests look like to and from Home Depot. So this here is MITM proxy. I recommend using it. It's free and open source. You can download it yourself and install it. Uh, I'm not going to go through that here. I'll put a link to this below in the description. What I will show you real quick is on the CC data platform, you can launch proxies that run MITM proxy and do all of this uh, on the website. So now I'm going to show you live how to connect your phone to a CFC MITM proxy and actually view the web traffic on the web UI so you don't have to install anything and we'll uncover these Home Depot endpoints. First thing you got to do is launch the proxy. Once it's launched, you'll see here an intercept port that you can use to perform the MITM interception. So just click on it and it'll open up a very simple looking UI. Uh, you can find instructions on how to connect your phone. So I'm going to do it real quick. This is an iPod Touch for full disclosure. 
uh, just because my phone is doing other things right now. So to connect to it, you just change your proxy here. So go to manual, and then under server, put in the IP. Hit save. Then if this is your first time, you have to go and tell your phone to trust the MITM proxy by uh, trusting the certificate. So if you just click here, you can follow the instructions. I'll go into this in another video if you need clarification. Anyway, the point is we're now connected. We can see our SSL traffic on the screen right now. So I now want to go to Home Depot. So load it up. So now we're looking at the Home Depot app and we can see all our traffic flying by on the screen, homedepot.com. So we're doing what we were doing in Google Chrome, but now using the mobile app. So once you've verified that you're connected, I like to hit refresh here to kind of clear the screen and then start browsing on the mobile app with a fresh slate. So let's find some gifts. Uh, I'm gonna go to gift center and you'll see the traffic move in. And let's do shop now. And all right, it looks like more data is flowing in. We're watching the raw data. Okay, so now I have some products. So now again, now once I know I'm on the target page on my mobile app, I'm gonna refresh my interception again. And I'm gonna scroll down once this is cleared. I promise I'll make a better UI if enough people start using this. All right, so let's scroll down a little bit. And then once we paginate, we should see the payload on the website. There we go. So now that I see the new products come up, let's search for something. Uh, ooh, this seven person spa looks nice. So I'm gonna type command F and I wanna search for some free text to find it here in my uh, network payload. So let's type in seven dash person, uh, here we go, seven person spa. So this here is the raw JSON it looks like that's powering uh, the mobile app. Perfect, so it looks like we found our JSON. So let's just double check this. I'm gonna select all of this and just take a closer look. So here I just pasted it in Sublime and let's format it as JSON and let's find our seven person spa. Okay, so now it looks like we've intercepted the raw JSON that Home Depot uses for its mobile app. This is neat, so I can see it directs me to a URL, it has the product label here, has some pricing, SKUs, things like that. So they're using this to power their mobile app and we just intercepted the traffic that they were sending to our phone. Now if we go back to our interception and scroll up a little bit, the platform will actually show us the raw URL that our phone used to talk to Home Depot. So our phone made a request to this URL here to talk to Home Depot and then Home Depot sent back the phone to show us this data on the Home Depot app. So because we jumped through all these hoops to see what this URL is, odds are Home Depot doesn't want people accessing this URL. It was only intended for the mobile app to use. So if we were to try hitting this URL from another tab or something, that may or may not be against their terms of service. Who really knows? The point is, is that we managed to get structured data back from Home Depot. So now one's wondering, how do we actually go about scraping everything automatically? Well, as much as I would love to call this URL, I mean, it seems pretty harmless. I would never want to break a company's terms of service. You know, that's really serious stuff. It's like breaking the speed limit. That's, you know, no one ever does it. So I can't actually show you or demonstrate what I would need to do to automatically hit this URL. I mean, it looks pretty self-explanatory. This nav param here looks like a category ID that you could just enter. And then there's a pagination here, a start index, page size. You can even put in a store ID, put in keywords. So I can actually show you what it's like to use this URL in a programmatic fashion. But what I did do is document this URL as well as a couple other URLs I found using this exact same technique that way you don't have to go and connect your phone and jump through all these hoops just if you want to see what these URLs are for. Again, clearly just for informational purposes. Now if you wanted to, you could actually click into these endpoints. You can see here on the Steve C platform, the URL builder, it would allow me to go back to that URL I saw, for example, and take this category ID and enter it in here, as well as pagination offsets like 20, and then the Steve C platform would actually put together the URL, pre-construct everything for me, and allow me to execute this over proxy. And if I hit this button, it would go and take all that nasty JSON and flatten it into a CSV file, as well as perform auto pagination so I could stitch together one large aggregate CSV file for different sections of the Home Depot catalog from different categories, search terms, store inventories, etc. But like I said, because there's this really stern disclaimer up here that 
it may vi violate their terms. They probably don't want us doing this, so I can't actually show you what happens if I hit this execute button. But what I can do is I can keep sitting here and scrolling through the app, product after product, just sort of keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. You can get your friends and make a, like a scrolling party. And as I keep doing this, the Steve C interceptor is gonna keep documenting the network traffic that Home Depot sends my phone. So it's all gonna be on this page here, and I could go and save this page into a Word document, and then sit here and manually stitch all the JSON together and put it into a CSV like this. So once you get the CSV file, you can have some fun with it. You can load the data into your own app if you need pricing or inventory information. You can load it into Panthas like this for fun if you just wanna poke around. So here you'll see the data frame from the CSV has basic IDs, it has SKU information, it has the brand name, who made each product, what the price is, if it's on sale, the inventory for source, if you give it a physical store ID. Uh, I can see a lot of other things like the description. So for fun, I want to do a little bit of analysis of those smart home items that were on sale. I first wanted to see of the ones that Home Depot was putting on sale, I wanted to weight them by how many reviews each brand got uh, from the 130 that were on sale. And it seems like you know, Home Depot is really promoting Google-heavy products, uh, popular ones from Google, uh, followed by Ring, uh, I think that's the doorbell, Schlage, Smart Locks, Echobee, the thermostat, and Lutron. So it's just weighted by the number of reviews of those 130 products. And what's also interesting is I like a good deal. So it seems like Google is the dominant player, but you're not going to find much of a discount on Google. So what I can do is I can look at the percentage off that each of these brands are offering in this gift guide section, and I can see that the Swan brand is actually offering a significant portion of a discount compared to the other uh, brands, followed by Lenovo, Arlo, LaVue, etc. So see, Google is dead last because they don't need to give a discount. Their products sell enough. Versus it looks like Swan is trying to make a dent in the market. Therefore, they're offering a relatively higher percentage off of their products compared to their competitors. So you can do fun sorts of things like this once you get the raw data. Let me know in the comments below what kind of analysis you want to do with this data. Are you looking more for pricing patterns? for inventory, or what do you want to build with this data? Uh, remember, the copyrights here are a little bit gray area. Uh, so Home Depot can actually copyright a lot of this data, uh, such as the structure of the format they send back to you, but they can't copyright fact, such as a UPC or a SKU or a price or an inventory that they state at a given time. Uh, so just be very careful about what you do with this data. It's kind of up to you. Uh, regardless of how you get the data in the first place, whether you write it down on a pen and paper or if you use some scraping technique I may or may not have covered in this video. Leave me a thumbs up if you like this. Most importantly, let me know what you want to do with this data so I can make more videos about that in the future. And be sure to subscribe to Steve C Data so you don't miss those future videos. Thank you so much for watching and have a data-driven day.